Vai a sta I entirely agree with my honourable friend. He is, for once, absolutely right. No one would venture to dispute that this criminal, that the dastardly perpetrator of these infamous crimes against property, the property of the upper classes, must be caught, must be brought to justice, must be punished. Yeah. Yeah. In pursuance of which, I, as Her Majesty's Secretary of State for Home Affairs, have taken certain steps. It would be imprudent of me to reveal what steps, for by informing the House I should be informing the burglar. I will merely say that the Commissioner of Police has his best men working on this case. And may I say, it will not be long before they succeed in capturing this criminal, because I do not hesitate to say, and I am not guided solely by patriotism in saying it, that there is no detective like a British detective. And furthermore, when this villain is apprehended, he will be treated with all the severity the law can command. I have given a recommendation that he be condemned to imprisonment for the maximum term permissible with hard labor. Yes, the House of Commons is a very sensible body of men, taking them on the whole. And I thought in applauding my speech, they showed great good sense. Hard labor? Something must be done about the animal. Penal service. It's barbaric. It's back to the bad old days of the hulks and transportation to Botany Bay and hanging a man for stealing a sheep. It's barbaric if it's us. It's barbaric because that man is a barbarian. And him a member of the club, too. I thought I struck to the heart of the problem when I spoke of the necessity for harsher punishment. Only the other evening, my sister-in-law, Lady Paxton, was robbed. These crimes against property must cease. Otherwise, Thomas Ash talks about crimes against property. Is there a sin against the Holy Ghost? Doesn't he realize it's property itself which is sinful? Or has been acquired by sinful means over past centuries by robber barons and crooked landlords? It's people like me. I am... Virtuous? Oh, yes, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't go as far as I said that. Like Robin Hood. Running out of his Thank you, buddy. Except that Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor, and you have no intention of giving to the poor. Not rich. Ah. So yes, the Commissioner's top men are splendid, fellows. They are splendid. Oh, yes. Yes. Deserve to be better known than they are. In fact, I'm thinking of putting one of them up for membership of this club. Why not? But very decent fellow, once you get over his Scottish accent and great heavens. Uh, for a fellow to be a Scotsman is no proof that he's not a gentleman. No. I hope the whole club will feel the same as I do. And I have no doubt at all that uh, uh, if that is the case... Are you sure you want to go on with this? I know what I'm doing. Can you change this for me, please? Glad you restrained yourself. What? Mackenzie. Oh, very draft. You don't want to let the club know your opinion of Mackenzie. If Mackenzie is put up for membership of the club, I shall express my opinion by blackballing him. Oh, yes, me too. Well, there's one good thing about it. What? Obviously, Mackenzie hasn't confided in Sir Arthur that he suspects you. Mackenzie is waiting to nab me and announce it in a blaze of glory to an unsuspecting world. As he very nearly did the other night. Nonsense. I knew he was in the room all the time. Oh, oh, did you? I practically put him there in the sacred cause of making a fool of him yet again. Surprised he hasn't been round to see you yet about that little business. Little business? You call the Paxton heirlooms a little business? Only as a sort of joke. What will you say if Mackenzie turns up? As always. I shall tell him nothing but the truth. Hey, Bob. Hey, you Oh, good morning, sir. Uh, would it be Mr. Raffles you were wanting? It would. Uh, he's up in his room, sir. I think you know the way. Aye, ah, I do indeed. Time for a quick one, buddy? Oh, yes, please. Well, who's that? Evidently a visitor. 
Well, I came in just now. I looked behind me. I didn't see a soul. Hmm. Man with no soul. Must be a policeman. Mackenzie. I imagine so. To inquire where I was on Tuesday night, the night of the Paxton robbery. Oh, and uh, where were you? Well, you remember, I spent the night with you in the Turkish baths in Northumberland Avenue. Of course you remember. Yes, but you left about midnight. I'm sure, it was less than that. Good morning, Inspector. How good it is to see you again. It's been quite some time now. Nearly a week. My name's Ruffles. May I come in? Yes, of course. Perhaps you would care to join Mr. Manders and myself in a drink before lunch. We're going to lunch at Lady Arlington's. I do find that one needs a drink before one goes there. Wouldn't you agree? And what will it be? Oh, of course, Scotch whiskey. I simply came here to inquire where you were on the night of the Paxton robbery, sir. Ha. Ah, uh, let me think. No, Bunny, where was I on the night of the Paxton robbery? What night was that? My dear fellow, don't you read the newspapers? No, I don't. Now the cricket season's over. But you're missing such fun. They all had a marvellous account of how Scotland Yard made out of fools of themselves. Again, didn't they, Inspector? They were not good to us, no, sir. No, they <clears> weren't. The things they said. I'm surprised. You didn't sue them. It was uh, Monday night. Tuesday. Oh, no, Monday night. Tuesday night, sir. You're quite sure it was Tuesday night? Quite sure, sir. Inspector thinks it was Tuesday night. Uh, Tuesday. Well, Tuesday you had supper with me at Willis's and then we strolled along to the Turkish baths. In Northumberland Avenue, yes. yes? Yes, yes, you're quite right. It was Tuesday night. Until what time were you there, sir? Oh, all night. All night. You're quite sure of that, you and Mr. Raffles. We had booked in for all night. To be quite frank, Inspector, we were under the necessity known as sleeping it off. That's right. We'd had a very good supper. Hmm. Drink, Inspector? Drink, buddy? No, I won't uh, thank you all the same, sir. It's a pity. Are you prepared to swear that you were at the Turkish baths all night, sir? It's good scotch going to waste. Are you, sir? Inspector, have I ever given you cause to doubt my word? Yes, constantly. Well, then I suggest you inquire at the Turkish baths. I fully intend to. That is, if you're quite sure it was Monday night. <laughs> Phew. Well, I hope he doesn't check the Turkish baths. Oh, not he. He's too afraid of making a public fool of himself again. In that case, you got away with it. And not a single word of untruth. You said you'd been there all night. No. I heard you. I said we had booked in for all night. It wasn't until afterwards that I remembered I had a, an appointment with the Paxton Jewels. Oh, still. Not one word of untruth. Well, who's that? Well, it can't be Mackenzie again. It must be a member of the human race. <laughs> good morning, Inspector. How good it is to see you again. It's been quite some time now. Nearly a minute. I just called back to ask, Mr. Raffles, since you're a student of the newspapers. You'll have read the reports of the Home Secretary's speech. Every word, several times. He is sadly repetitious. About uh, penal servitude for cracksmen. Mm, and thumbscrews and racks and iron meds, oh, if I remember right. I just wanted to make sure you'd read it, sir. Mm. Good day to you, sir. Good day, Inspector. Give my love to the Middle Ages. That man and the Home Secretary are two of a kind, incompetent, insensitive ignoramuses. And you're annoyed with them? More annoyed than I've been for a long time. So, what are you going to do? We are going to teach them both a lesson. Tonight. Both? How? Lunch. Kensington Palace Gardens. A suitably a swagger address for the right honourable Sir Arthur Rumbold, Bart, Privy Councillor. Hmm. You looked him up. His address, yes, in Kelly. So you think he's got something suitably swagger that's worth stealing? He's married. Poor woman. I imagine he provided her with a trinket or two anyway. I don't care what he's got as long as he steal it. <laughs> that's unusual for you. This is a punitive expedition, buddy. He must be made to pay, to suffer in his pocket where it hurts, and in his pride where it hurts even more. Well, you've come on this expedition without your usual preparation. With no preparation at all for a change, Bunny. Everything will be improvised. That's the fun of it. Don't you see?
Right. Come on, buddy. Lights left on in the porch. I wonder why. Don't know. Someone not home yet, perhaps? Perhaps. Maybe Sir Arthur's been detained at the house by a late night sitting. We'll just have to chance it. You don't want him walking in on us. <laughs> well, the Home Secretary discovering that his home is not his castle, I say, what fun. It's not my idea of fun. You can go back to your flat if you like. No, Raffles. I never like leading you in where you aren't keen or where you aren't necessary. Then let me lead you. Come on. Come on, Bunny. Wait a minute, Bunny. What's happening next door? Oh, I forgot. Lady Milford is giving a charity ball. I read about it in the newspapers. Oh, well, you'd better give up Raffles for tonight, at least. No, I'm damned if I do. There are too many potential witnesses. And too many policemen. The more police, the merrier. Oh, Raffles. They'll be too busy with the Milfords to bother about us. Honestly, Raffles, I Come think Come the be... four corners of the world in arms and we will shock them. Hey, buddy. Right. Right. Now then, follow me. Do as I do. We'll keep to the grass Rasper, first as long as we can, and when you walk on the gravel, don't use your heels. There is someone still down there. Wait here, buddy. What have you found? Yale lock of the newest type. That means there's something special in this room. What do you think? Something Sir Arthur doesn't want us to have. But we'll have it. Can you do it? I shall have to cut out a section of the panel and open the door from the inside. I may have come without a plan, but I've come prepared for anything.
Where does he keep his safe? Hmm? Either all the same, these members of government, they have no imagination. It's always behind a bookcase or behind their best picture. That is his best picture. It must be. It's the only picture in the room. And it's Salisbury. I bet it all goes on behind the Prime Minister's back. Let's see. Ah, what did I tell you? Well done. Yes. We'll open a window first, just in case we have to make a hurried departure. I'll do it. What? No! No, no, no. Wait a minute. They had bells on or some kind of alarm. And have a look. This may have some sort of alarm, too. I can't see anything. Just have to chance it. Four house the left, cabby! Yes. Why is it always the third one? Now then. <clears throat> yes, let's see what the harper has to offer us. Arthur himself, a bit late for the nick of time, arriving at the 13th hour, perhaps? Hello! Someone's bolted the door! Come and let me in! What's that? I bolted the door to make sure he couldn't get in. Merely a gesture. What if that's? Don't you know who I am? 
Eeny, meeny, miny. Dodson! Dodson! Can you hear me? It's me, Sir Arthur, the master. I'm freezing to death out here, damn it! Open this door! I can't believe the freeze. I'm the Home Secretary. As always, impeccable test. Just a minute, Sir Arthur. I'm carrying as fast as I can. I think it is time we were not here. Follow me. Secretary's house. Oh, blimey, the governor. Why did you bolt the door? I didn't bolt it, Sir Arthur. Dodson, what's happening? What was that terrible noise? Waking us all from our beauties. There's somebody broke the door. Not Wonderful, Inspector Mackenzie. And supporting a charity ball, too. You know, Mr. Ravels? Not working. I thought you had sworn not to rest till you caught the scoundrel who was giving these good ladies and gentlemen so much concern. I must ask you to lower your voice, Mr. Ravels. I'm here incognito. Ah, you are on duty after all. Mingling discreetly with the guests, that sort of thing. Well, what a very cunning disguise. Don't worry. No one will ever suspect that you're really a detective. And why, I ask myself, are you here, Mr. Raffles? Why am I ever anywhere? Except for fun. Sorry to be a bother. I don't want my coat. I just want something out of the pocket. It's not a bother at all, sir. 301. Here you are, sir. Oh. Thank you. Look, I'm sorry, sir, but we heard this noise and we thought there was something wrong. No, no, it's quite all right. We heard shouting and banging, sir. No, you're not but wanted we heard, here, but please. I can only call a hullabaloo, sir. I am Sir Arthur Rumble, the Home Secretary, and I tell you there is nothing the matter. Do you understand that? Sir Arthur? Yes, my dear. Something's happened to the door of your study. Somebody's been tampering with it. Good God. Thank you, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, very neat job, that, sir. Thank you. I've got what I wanted. You're Mr. Raffles, aren't you? Yes. You're my hero. Really? I've seen you play cricket ever so many times. Well, have you, Badger? Yeah, I love watching cricket. Or well, when you're playing. <laughs> oh, marvellous girl you are. Will you look after my girl especially, ma'am? Yeah, I will. Don't let anybody else touch it. I won't. What's your name? Jane. Thank you very much, Jane. Thank you, sir. Smoking in the smoking room or in the library. 
Need him for his instructions, sir. Eh? Yes, of course. I do understand. Now, go outside. It's cold outside, sir. Won't you want your coat? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Not at all, thank you. The safe, my confidential paper. My jewels, where are they? Gone? No, no. Just your diamond necklace. Oh! Oh. Send for the police! Dodson, oh! get the silver latte! I think you may be needed. Do excuse us, ladies. We'll find some clues or something. Where did he come from? Where did he go to? But I'm a policeman, sir. I'm not a detective. Well, get a detective. Oh, very good, sir. I'll send for one right now, sir. No need, Constable. The finest brain in the force is at your disposal. God bless my soul, it's Rubble. What on earth are you doing here? I live here. Oh, really? But what on earth are you doing here, Raffles? I was at the Milford's dance. I had no idea they lived next door to you. Well, they do. And lucky for you, they do. Do you know, I just sneaked outside to have a smoke. Well, you know what a fanatic Lady Milford is about cigarette smoke in the house. And lo and behold, there was someone kicking up a devil of a shindy over at this place. Oh, yeah. Banging and shouting. And Ruffles, you sir. never heard such a row. It sounded like a costa coming home dead drunk in the Mile End Road. What on earth was it? That was me. Oh, really? Couldn't get in. Are you trying to break the door down? Uh, no. It sounded like a lunatic. Exactly like a lunatic. Mr. Ruffles. And of course, think... I heard a lady scream. Well, when one hears. <laughs> a woman screams. I just grabbed the expert here and rushed him straight over. Inspector Mackenzie of Scotland Yard at your service. No, but of course you know him, don't you? He's one of your service speak. Uh, good evening, Inspector. Uh, Home Secretary. Now, sir, what, uh, what seems to be the matter, sir? Burglary is the matter. I say, this way, Mr. Raffles. There. See for yourself. Oh! Did you get your say? Afraid so. Take much? Yes, my diamond necklace. It's been in the family for generations. Oh, I say, what rotten luck. And wasn't it only last week that your sister, Lady Paxton, was robbed? Yes, her rubies, emeralds, diamonds, everything. And the police seem quite helpless. Well, I must say, it does seem a bit hard when not even the Home Secretary's safe. Why, it's tantamount to revolution. That, or incompetence. If you'll excuse me, Miss Raffles, I am going back to bed. Arthur, you will stay here until you've found my jewels. Yes, my dear. You may wake me to tell me you found them. Yes, my dear. Not for any other purpose. <clears throat> well, don't just stand there, man. Shouldn't they be down the drive looking for clues or something? Uh, more clues be destroyed by precipitate action, Sir Arthur, than were ever retrieved by it. Uh, a constable, look, send your men to search the garden. Tell them to keep their eyes open. If they find anything, leave it alone and send for me. Inspector. Now, Mr. Raffles, do I understand you to say that you were looking towards this house at the particular moment? Yes, yes. As I said, I just nipped outside for a smoke. Well, you see, the band were playing a poker, and I'm a little bit old for that sort of thing. But my friend, Bunny, you should... Oh, you remember my friend, Bunny Manders, don't you, Inspector? Oh, you should have seen him. He was careering about the room with the prettiest girl you ever saw, having a whale of a time. He'll be furious when I tell him he's missed a real-life robbery. Mr. Raffles, we're not talking about Mr. Manders. Tell me, sorry. You were outside Milford House when you heard Sir Arthur banging and shouting. I was trying to gain access to my own premises. Yes, of course, sir, of course. Now, Mr. Raffles, did you see anybody getting out of, jumping out of this window and running away? Yes. What? It was a chap. But you saw the butler. Did I? Oh! Well, I thought it was a bit funny, this chap climbing out of the window just after there'd been that appalling right at the front door. Now, what did he do? Oh, um, uh, he, he looked round, 
Which way did he go? Uh, he, he, he dashed off uh, down the drive toward the gate. If you had been a bit sooner, you'd have caught him. I but we was just coming in at the gate, sir. Ah, no, no, I'm awfully sorry to have to correct you, but in fact, you'd already gone into the house. If you had been a bit later, you'd have caught him. I imagine, sir. Typical. Well, we must have hidden till we disappeared, sir. Yes, yes, I imagine, sir. But I must say, though, it is the most extraordinary coincidence. Well, what is? Well, there's the inspector keen as mustard over at Lady Milford's premises, expecting goodness knows who to do goodness knows what, and all the time the trouble's over here. Ah, well, it's not the kind of coincidence that I believe in, Mr. Ruffles. No. Well, all I ask is that my police force should catch the man who had the temerity to burgle my home so that I can make an example of him. Well, if anyone can do it, Mackenzie can. All we have to do is sit back and watch. Oh, poor Bunny, though. He will be livid when I tell him what he's missed. I had no idea that crime could be such fun. <laughs> He seemed to be a normal sort of a chap, about my size, I'd say. Oh, really, sir? Yes, and uh, dressed all in black. Black trousers, black jersey, and I think a black mask. Uh, excuse me, sir? And I had the impression that he had flaming red hair. Flaming red hair? Flaming red hair. Did you spot anything? Uh, no, sir, nothing at all, sir. Oh, I did. I want to wonder if this has anything to do with the burglar. I found it on the gravel just inside the gates. You may remember, Inspector, I stood aside to let you through first. As a matter of fact, I thought it was yours and that you dropped it. And I was going to give it back to you later on, but what with all the excitement and the fuss and so on, I forgot all about it. I wonder what it can be. You wonder what it can be, do you, Mr. Raffles? Well, as I thought it was yours, I didn't like to open it. It's a set of burglar's tools. Oh. I suppose it can't be yours, can it? Dropped by the butler. Must have been. With what object would you say, Mr. Raffles? No idea. You didn't see anybody else besides this man with the flaming red hair, did you? Uh, no, no one. Strange. These men usually have somebody with them, you know, an accomplice, to uh, do odd jobs for them. Ah, do they? Aye, they do. Who? Oh. Well, perhaps he had one, and he's still around the place. Uh, where would you think, Mr. Raffles? Well, now, this chap with the flaming red hair went out of the window, and let's say the other fellow was a bit slow, and and darted into No. No one here. No. No one there either. There may not have been a second man. Possibly. We ought to concentrate on this red-haired hair teller. Ah, we ought to concentrate on the bulk that we know about, anyway. Well, shall I show you all where I found the toolkit? A good idea. Yes? Shall I show all of you? Will you come outside? Inspector, are you coming? I wouldn't dream of leaving your side, Mr. Raffles. Marvellous burglar hunt. Who are you? Sir Arthur. You know Bunny Manders, don't you? Oh, uh, 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 Member of the club. Uh, yes. Yes, while well, you've been making an ass of yourself on the ballroom floor, we've all been giving Inspector McKenzie here a helping hand. You've just come over from Lord Milford's, have you, sir? Yes. You see, Jennifer and I were dancing round and round and found ourselves out on the terrace, and I saw the lights and heard the rumpus going on, and I said, let's go over there and see what's happening. But she just kept on dancing, so I dashed across not to miss any of the fun. Frankly, Inspector? I'm surprised the band didn't come too. Ah, uh, well, Inspector, if there's uh, nothing more I can do to help, I think I shall just pop over to the Milfords, pick up my coat, and then off home to bed. Good night, Sir Arthur. Good night, Raffles. Good night, then, Inspector. I hope you lay your hands on the man. Oh, don't worry, sir, we shall. Good. Well, come on, then, Bunny. 
We mustn't keep these good people out of their beds any longer. No. Good night again, sir. No. Good, night. good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Manders. Uh, this way, Inspector. Very fancy bed. I want the drink. Come along, Inspector. Thank you, sir. A little whiskey. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ruffles and Mr. Manders, eh? Ah, well, I know where to pick up the two of them. You mean as witnesses? No. Thank you, sir. What then? How did Mr. Manders get into the garden when we were all at the gate? That's the only way in there is, and we didn't see anybody. No? Well? Well, the only answer I can see is that he was here all the time, and Mr. Raffles came back to try and rescue him. Oh, come, Inspector. You don't mean to say you think they are the burglars? I mean to say just that, sir. But they're gentlemen. Aye, so was Lord Elmer's Belleville, sir. Uh, true, but they have money. Uh, but gained by what means, sir? Uh, but, damn it, they're members of my club. Well, that may be prima facie evidence, Sir Arthur, but is it an absolute guarantee of respectability? Not absolute, no. Well, let me tell you, Sir Arthur, that I've been hot on the heels of Mr. Raffles for a long time now. Time and time again he has wriggled out of my grasp. But now I've got him. And when I arrest him, as I most certainly shall, I want it to be where all the world can see. No, no, I forbid it. If you're wrong, if you would make me look such a... Members of my club? Condign punishment, yes, but this whole matter must be hushed up. Besides, it would give such a weapon to these socialist fellows. They'll go around claiming all the upper classes were criminals. And we can't have that. I'm sorry I had to sacrifice my tools, but it was the only way I could think of of getting all these people outside. Well, thank you for preferring me to your tools. My dear fellow. But do you think we've got away with it yet? That depends on a young woman, a very pretty young woman. Raffles, you've been up to your tricks again. <laughs> Good evening again, sir. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Can I help you, sir? Oh, no, I'm just waiting for Mr. Raffles while he gets his overcoat. Hello, Jen. You really have comfort this time? Yes. Don't bother, I'll get it myself. I remember where it is. Can you find it all right? Do you want me to help? Uh, no. No, thanks. I'm fine. <laughs> oh! Oh, dear. <laughs> Come to think of it, uh... No, I've changed my mind. I won't need the coat after all. I'll leave it here. You'll catch your death of cold. Oh, never mind. I'll take a chance. You silly take a chance like that. Well, I expect I am. What is life if one doesn't take chances? I'll keep the ticket if I may. I'll see you again then. Yes. And the overcoat will be safe with you. Safe as houses. Ah, oh, don't say that. Houses aren't safe at all. Safe as anything you like. You won't let anybody else touch it. Over my dead body. Thank you, Jane. Goodbye for now. Thank you, sir. Right. Good night. Good evening, sir. But you forgot your overcoat. Excuse me, sir. Do you want a cab? Oh, yes, please. No, no. No, thank you. No, we'll, um, we'll walk and get warm. Well, we'll walk down to Kensington High Street and get one from there. Good night. Good night, Good night sir. Why do you think? Oh, oh, you've left it in the cloakroom? Yes. Do you think it'll be safe there? Eh? Well, it's a long side safer there than it would be on me. Oh. Mackenzie. That's right, and that's why. Evening, gentlemen. We have instructions to search everybody leaving Lord Milford's house. What do you mean? There's been a bug that he committed next door. I know. I was there, with you. It's me, Raffles. You know me. Yes, I do indeed. I also have instructions to arrest you as unobtrusively as possible. Arrest me? <laughs> Is this some sort of bad joke? No, it's uh, the end of joking, Mr. Raffles. Uh, nothing on this, gentlemen, Inspector. Search Mr. Raffles. Yeah. Well, hurry up about it. 
Freezing to death standing around out here with no coat. Wait a minute. I fancy your garb is somewhat incomplete, Mr. Raffles. What do you mean? Where is your overcoat, Mr. Raffles? My what? Your overcoat. Oh, I didn't have one. But you said it's at Arthur's house. You would have to come back to the Milfords to pick up your overcoat. Oh, did I? You did. <laughs> it must have been a slip of the tongue. Ah, I agree. It was a slip of the tongue. Is it in the cloakroom, Mr. Raffles? No. May I have the ticket, sir? Or do I have to go into that pocket for it myself? Damn you, Mackenzie. Oh, no, it's you. It's going to be damned, Mr. Raffles. To penal servitude. You'll return with us to the house. I hope you're not going to make too much of a fool of yourself again, Mackenzie. Lady Milford would be furious if you ruined her party. Are we done for? Not if Jane is the girl I think she is. Again. Good evening, sir. Mr. Raffles' coat. And quick, number 301. You're not Mr. Raffles. Hand it over. Who are you? Inspector Mackenzie, Scotland Yard. Where do I know you are? There. That could be anything. What do you want it for anyway? I promised him I'd take special care of that coat. There's been a burglary and Mr. Raffles is a thief. And he has the loot in his pockets and I wanted to prove he's a thief. I don't believe you. You don't have to believe me. Just give me his coat. I don't believe he's a thief. Well, Mr. Raffles, says his mad Scotsman is, says you're a thief. Shall I call the butler and have him thrown out? Young woman, do you want me to arrest you two for obstructing the course of justice? No. Then give me that coat. But I promise, Mr. Raffles. It's all right, Jane. You did your best. Give him the coat. No, Mr. Raffles. Diversionary tactics, eh? Send the old fool to look in the wrong place and you'll no bother to look in the right one, is that it? Well, this time I'm searching you myself. Ah, uh, not until you have apologised to that young lady for causing her distress. I apologise, young woman. I acted in good faith. Now, Mr. Raffles. What about those shoes, Inspector Kenzie? Hmm? Or up the jolly old sleeve? The silk handkerchief, perhaps? If I had one. No, I'm sure you can think of something. Give me my hat and coat, young woman, eh? Very clever, Mr. Raffles. I don't know how you do it, but I'll get you one day. Oh, no, no, no. Allow me, Inspector, please. It's a chilly night, and you'll catch cold, if nothing else. <clears throat> And, Inspector, you're forgetting your bonnet. I'm sure it's very becoming. Well, now that it's been proved impeccably innocent, I think I shall have my coat after all. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Jane what, precisely? Jane Brown, sir. Jane Brown. I can't thank you enough, Jane Brown. And next season, I shall send you two tickets for the ladies' enclosure. Oh, sir. And as a small token of my esteem. What though the rose have prickles yet, tis plucked. For beauty under twenty locks kept fast yet. Love breaks through to pick them at the last. Oh, sir. Enough. Biggest risk I've ever taken. Remind me never to go in for improvisation again. Oh, I will. I know one thing for me, though. What? In the future, whenever the risk becomes too great, I should do another conjuring trick. How did you do it this time? Hmm? 
Mackenzie. Mackenzie? He had more in his bonnet than uh, just a Scottish bee. <laughs> <laughs>